Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is that you're joining me, thank you once again for clicking on the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review Channel. The subject of today's video, Twisby Precision. Started, I want to first say a big sincere thank you to Linda Kennedy, Mike Kennedy, Richard Binder, Barbara Binder for being so kind to me scheduling a few hours the day before the Long Island Pen Show to sit down with me and chat about fountain pens, flex nibs, history, how they got into the business. They also let me record video of this interview. Stay tuned for that footage to be released shortly. Now before I get onto the neutral zone, the good, the bad, the ugly, and high noon on this pen, I want to first go over some background information, starting with the brand that is Twisby. Now Twisby wasn't always Twisby. They used to be called a company Tashin Precision. What they did for about 40 years was they produced OEM products for other brands. OEM meaning original equipment manufacturer. Then one day what they said to themselves was, hey, wait a minute, why is it that everyone else is making buku bucks off of the stuff that we make just by slapping their name on the label? Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go Skynet on the world. And Judgment Day came, and that Judgment Day was in 2009 when they converted Tashin Precision into Twisby. Now let's break down the name Twisby. T-W-S-B-I. Why are there so many consonants? Not enough vowels? Here's why. There's a phrase in Chinese. It's called San Wen Tang. Means Hall of Three Cultures. What they did is they took this phrase and they flipped it, giving you the acronym TWS. What is BI? Well, in Chinese, that apparently means writing instrument. They attach that to TWS, you got Twisby. Now, the word Twisby also reminds them of something called the Hall of Rare Treasures. This hall is where three masterworks of calligraphy reside. And it was created by some dude named Emperor Quian Long. He lived from 1711 to 1799. That was 88 years old. That's two years shy of 90 which is really impressive because the rest of the world was dying off at about 30 during the same time period. So this dude was able to figure out how to live 300% longer than the entire world, but seemingly only able to find three people who had good handwriting. It is still there today. To the best of my knowledge, in 2009, Twisby was born. Now when Twisby was established, they released a pencil and this pencil is called Precision. And if you look at the pencil precision, it looks a lot like our fountain pen. Only difference is the precision pencil overall is thinner, has a ribbed grip section. The click button in the back that extracts the lead is also shorter and thinner. The Twisby precision, in my opinion, is inspired mostly by the precision pencil more so than the Twisby classic. That's just my opinion. 2018, Twisby released the Precision Fountain Pen. That's all I have for the background information. Moving on to the neutral zone. Those elements about the pen that are neither good or bad or can be good or bad depending on you. Let me start with our nib. The nib is a number five Yovo stainless steel nib. Mine is an extra fine. It's branded Twisby. The feed is a proprietary feed. Both the nib and feed are part of a removable, unscrewable nib unit. However, just be advised, the nib unit unscrews and screws using the nib unit housing as opposed to the threads of the grip section. Moving on to the cap, the body of the cap is made of aluminum. On the top of the cap, we have a finial, and the finial is your standard rounded top dome-shaped Twisby emblem. It sits inside of a chimney that's longer than the usual chimneys that are on the top of the finials. Let's move to the clip. The clip is attached to the body of the cap using a robot claw. Initially, I had some concerns regarding this grip claw. I didn't want it sliding up and down, flipping off, snapping off, or whatnot. Upon closer inspection, what I do notice is that if you look underneath the clip, you'll notice that there's a small hole. What's inside that small hole is what I believe to be a small bolt securing the clip to the body of the pen. That way it's not sliding up and down, coming off when you don't want it to. The tension of the clip is strong enough to secure your pen in your pocket. If at some point during the day you decide to run out and play hopscotch, stand on your head, this pen will securely sit inside whatever article of clothing that you're wearing that particular day. Let's take a look at the grip section. The grip section is a rather thin grip section. It's made up primarily of an outer sleeve that is aluminum. Underneath the grip section is a stainless steel collar. That stainless steel collar holds the nib unit. Inside the stainless steel collar are these grooves. Now these grooves are there so that the nib unit can rest securely inside the collar. If you look at the nib unit, the bottom of the nib unit reveals these threads and these threads go into the body of the ink window. Just a little blurb on the ink window. Now doing research on this pen, as well as the classic, I always noticed that there was a common occurrence of leaking from the ink window. Now if you take a look, here's what you do. Make sure you look at the thread section of your ink window. Make sure that there's no crack. After you do that, you're going to take the thread of the housing unit and you're going to apply a small layer of silicone grease around the threads of the housing unit, put everything back together, screw it back in, and you're not going to have an issue. So long as there's no cracks on the threads of the ink window. Take a look at the metal thread assembly that attaches to the body. What you're going to have are metal threads. These threads are stainless steel and they attach to the threads inside the cap, which are aluminum. Right past the threads is an O-ring and this O-ring seals any kind of leaks that may or possibly occur inside the cap. So that way, if it's in your 
your pocket. It's not going to leak into your pocket. That's a good call. Let's move to the piston knob. The piston knob starts off with two small step designs, then a long piston knob, longer than those that we've seen on our classic. Take a look at the end of the piston knob. We got two O-rings. Now these two O-rings are also different from our Twisby classic in that they're at the end of the piston knob as opposed to closer to the beginning of the piston knob. On the top it says Twisby, in the middle it says Taiwan, and on the bottom it says Precision. I clocked this pen to have one and three quarters of a milliliter ink capacity. That is a ton of ink. The pen as a whole is a particular design. It doesn't have a cigar shape. It doesn't have a flat top. It doesn't have a common shape. This is a hexagonal pen. The body of it is brushed aluminum. It does bring to mind the concept of mechanical. It also looks a little bit like one of Aladdin's pant legs. The pen came in its usual packaging. It comes inside the cardboard box, inside your protective foam, and then its plastic case. You open up the case, you have a plastic holder where your pen sits. You got these two little clips that hold it down. On the underside of this case is going to be your Twisby wrench, as well as a tiny bottle of silicone grease. These are your instructions. It has Asian writing on it that I can't read, and the instructions are also here in English. That's all I got for the neutral zone. Moving on to the good. Those elements about the pen that are good. As usual, I like to start with the nib. Now, right out of the box, this nib wrote very well. This one's an extra fine. And I have to say, for an extra fine nib, it's very smooth. Yet, at the same time, it's got a high level of feedback and tooth. It doesn't really have any drag, either. I've had several Twisbees. On all the Twisbees, every time I pulled it out of the box, they wrote, well, times were aligned, no baby's bottom, no hard starts, no skipping, no ink starvation, no issues whatsoever. This one is no different. For a Yovo Extra Fine, this one is pretty fine. It's on par with a Japanese fine, maybe a touch finer, and as fine as the line it produces, I have to say that the line it makes is very wet, as well as the overall writing experience is pleasant. It's not like writing with a needle. It's not scratchy at all. The balance of the pen is also fantastic. When you post the pen, you're gonna notice that it is posted, but it doesn't back weight the pen. Unposted, it's perfect. Speaking of posting, when posting this pen, what you should definitely know is that this pen secures its post very well. It's not wiggly, it's not a soft post, it's a solid secure your post. Now when looking at this pen you would expect it to be heavier than it actually is, but it's not light to the point where you think it's poorly made or isn't constructed with a lot of design elements in it. When you hold it, it is lighter than how it looks. However, it still feels very solid. Everything is machined very well. As a matter of fact, the whole overall build quality is fantastic. The tolerances of this pen are so tight that everything is very well detailed, well articulated, and well designed. I said before that this has one and three quarters of a milliliter ink capacity, and that is a lot of ink. It's more ink than my Homo sapien maxi standard lava rock fountain pen. Yet at the same time, it's slimmer, lighter, with much less girth. That's all I got for the good. Moving on to the bad. Let's talk coin. This pen being $80, is now the most high-priced Twisby pen Twisby has to offer, with the exception of this same model with a 1.1 stub, and that costs $5 more. This pen is a fully aluminum-bodied pen, very well machined and textured, with stainless steel trim. It has a piston mechanism, a Yovo stainless steel number no. 5 nib. To my knowledge, this is the most inexpensive aluminum-machined pen, yet is arguably one of the highest quality, well-designed aluminum fountain pens out there. So I haven't got anything bad to say in terms of the bad. Moving on to the ugly. Those elements about the pen which should not be, but are. I have stared at this pen, examined this pen, looked at this pen, and tried to find something that should not have gotten past quality control. Problem is I couldn't find anything. Other than the fact that it straight up and down looks like one of Aladdin's pant legs, there's nothing for me to say about the ugly. The tie noon, decision making time. Should you or should you not pull the trigger on the Twisby Precision Fountain Pen? Now, unless you weren't paying attention or you're deathly allergic to ink, aluminum, products made in Taiwan, or German nibs, pull the trigger on this pen because those are the only reasons why you wouldn't. That was my review for the Twisby Precision. I hope it helped. Thanks again for watching. Be well, be safe.